me and me. And I'm just telling you the nature of that thing. You start to prophesy and start to share that stuff. And then all of a sudden, every heart goes to, I want a word. And they're trying to draw on a word from God, not realizing that you can go straight to God and get your word. Amen. 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 So it gets unhealthy really quick. You guys all right? Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of yeah. Yeah, I'm gone right now. <laughs> So watch this. I was in Bangor, Maine, in a place that's poverty-stricken, just a really bad place. I went out to eat, and we went to a restaurant. And I preached for the last couple days, you know, and shared the truth and stuff. Some pastors are with me. We're hanging out. We're at this restaurant. And at this restaurant, a waiter comes up, and I said to him, I said, hey, man, how you doing today? I just want to tell you, you're amazing. And he looks at me and he goes, why? That's what he said. Because it's the, it's the same town that Stephen King has a house in. Mm. So it's like... It's just a different kind of area. Not that Stephen King's... God's going to get him. But <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Serious. Because he's just got amazing talent. Yeah. He yeah. just does. And all of his gifts come down from the Father of Lights, regardless if he knows where they come from or not. It doesn't matter. Amen. So it just takes... I, I pray for encounters with people like Tom Cruise and Oprah and all that. I just do, because it doesn't matter what they say. And it doesn't matter on the spot they put you on. God will... Read everything about them and bring the reality of why we're alive. Amen. Thank you. So it's time that we rise up and understand who we really are so that when you're put in front of something like that, you can just bring it. Amen. And you don't have to be like, oh gosh, there's all these people and Oprah's going to know. <laughs> Come on, bring it. Let's just do it. Let's just get her done. <laughs> <laughs> what, about sitting there? what about having an interview like that? What about, what about being in the spot where you have to actually depend on God? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do you understand that we're that we're performance people? We're used to depending upon ourselves. Mm. Yeah. We're very we're we're very we're not accustomed to relying upon God. Mm -hmm. But the reality of the gospel is that you can't do this life without it. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't even pump gas without God. <laughs> you know, God brought that revelation to me about a year ago. He said, "Do you know, Todd? You won't even pump gas without me." Woo! Do you know how awesome that is? Because mm -hmm. there's somebody else on the other side of the expensive gas pump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sometimes we're so caught up with stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We get our eyes so fixed on what's wrong. Yes. That we forget what's been made right. Amen. Amen. We Amen. Forget why we're alive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> So I said to this guy, I said, man, I said, I just want to tell you, you're awesome because Jesus paid the price for you. Yeah. You're amazing. Okay. That's what he said. He's like, uh, what can I get you guys to drink? He's going around. We have about eight or nine people there. <clears throat> pastors, a couple pastors, leaders, elders, all that stuff. So we get our drinks. He comes back. I said, man, I said, what's going on? I said, you've got bad knees. That was a word of knowledge. He goes, he goes yeah, my knees are wrecked. Man. I'm sports and stuff. I said, give me your hand. Pray for him. I said, what's going on, man? What do you feel? No. I said, all right, dude. You're me. Hmm. So he's overwhelmed by the fact that I'm complimenting him. And people get freaked out when you encourage them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because everybody's in it for themselves. I preached it last night. I would advise to get that about Job because it's really misinterpreted. Yeah. It's really whack. Satan's just, Satan is, is dead on understanding that. And the only reason we seek God is for what He can do for us. Mm -hmm. he's, he's convinced of that. And he's going after selfishness so that He can pin you and make you just like Him. Mm. Wow. Come on, man. Mm. Yeah. It's the reality of this thing. Righteousness and selfishness are two opposites. Selfishness is the nature of the enemy. Righteousness is the nature of God. Amen. Right. Yes. Righteousness is everything. When you realize you've been made right with God, everything changes. Mm -hmm. Selfishness doesn't even have a voice. So when it tries to whisper, righteousness is so amazing and the love of God is so diffuse. <laughs> so why would I want that when I can have this? Thank you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Watch. All of you that are in here, none of you are getting out of this. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> hey. I know that God wants us to understand and come to a revelation of righteousness and why we've been made right with God. Yeah. It's the foundation for the whole Christian life. Righteousness. 
right standing with God, justified, justification, just, just as if I never sinned. Yeah. God sees me as if I'm in the garden and never eat the truth. I live my whole life that way. Every day I wake up, I look in the mirror, it's as if I never missed the mark. <laughs> Every day. That's awesome. That's yeah. crazy. How That's can awesome. he love you if you think you just missed it? Yeah. Wow. You can't. Yeah. The mission statement's amazing. It happens to be what all the law and the prophets hang on. Lord your God with everything that's in you and then love your neighbor as yourself. How can you love your neighbor if you don't love yourself? How can you not love you if you're really forgiven and you're really blameless and faultless in his eyes? You can love that. It's easy to love. I was a God unto myself. Now I'm not. Now I'm a son. I'm just like my dad. My dad is love. Therefore, I am love and I can love love. That's good. Simple. We make this thing technical. We think we've got to research and figure it all out. Man, your brain can't get in, but your heart can take the places your brain can't fit. Amen. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Okay. So I so I pray for this kid's knees. He goes back in the back, comes back out, gets our meal, and just share with them. I walk up to the hostess and say something to her about her back and pray for her, and her back gets healed. And the manager's standing right beside her and he's trying to ignore me, but he's <laughs> <laughs> trying to be out of sight, out of mind, out of sight, out of mind, out of sight, out of mind. But she gets healed and she walks up, tells the manager, oh my God, my back is completely good. This is amazing. This is crazy. All of a sudden, shh, 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 it starts. The waitresses are talking to each other. They're going around. The hostess talks to everyone. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, waitresses come by the table like, they want words. They want something. Yeah. People want to know there's more to life than what we're going yes. through. Amen. Yes. And you're to be a conduit for the glory of God to flow through on a constant basis because you're the source of life yes. for somebody next to you. Amen. And if you're so consumed with how things are going wrong in your life, you'll never realize why you're really here. Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. Come on. Want to get out of poverty? Start to be generous. Yeah. Yes. Listen, if you want to, if you want to stop poverty, if you want to stop stuff from happening, look, if your economy depends upon the world, you're in big trouble. Yes, right amen. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. But if your economy depends upon the righteousness of God, yes. the kingdom of heaven, God's not broke and he never is going to be broke. Yes. Amen. See, we think, well, you know, I don't, I don't know about all that because a man's got to work. I'm not saying quit your job. I'm saying work and do your job as unto the Lord. Yes. yes. And bless people when Amen. you don't feel like blessing Thank you, people. Lord. Just do it. Yes. It's not about what you feel like. Before you came into the kingdom, you only did what you felt like doing. Mm. That's right. You don't live by feelings when you come into this thing. You live by faith. Yes, amen. And if faith is there and feelings follow that, that's cool. <laughs> but if you live by feelings, you're in trouble. You'll yeah. be destroyed. Yeah. Mm. All right? Yeah. Okay. I'm just kind of rolling. What do I have to? All day. Keep going. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want to. Yay. You take work from the first of all. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's only 11.15. <laughs> I tell people, I, I start to share, and it's lunchtime, and people start. Valleys. The word of knowledge is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm talking about food. Yeah. 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 So we get our food and stuff, and I keep talking to this waiter and this girl across the table that we're sitting with. She looks at me with tears in her eyes. She goes, You don't know what you're doing. I said, yeah, I do. I'm loving She goes, I know. But you don't know what, what, this doesn't happen. I was a waitress for 10 years. And I come home from work constant in tears because of people being so mean to me. Waitresses are number one for hearing complaints of people. Come on, man. It's horrible. Right? Yes. See, you've got an amazing heart, and you're kind to everybody. You can't help it. That's just who you are. So you're a waitress, and you're kind to people, and people step on that. Yeah. 
Come on, this is, this is just the simple, just the simple truth. You guys all right with it? And then you yeah. pay for some technical yeah. word. I don't got it. <laughs> <laughs> if we think, honestly, Jesus said you come like a kid or you won't get it. So Amen. What, you just got the simplicity of it. Yeah. And we Amen. That. Yeah. What if you left here and actually cared about somebody outside of the church today and actually spoke a word of encouragement over one person today? Yeah. What if it wasn't about you anymore? What if you weren't consumed with you? And what if you actually said, hey, I just want to tell you that God thinks you're amazing. Yeah. And, they, and they just looked at you and said, you know, I needed that today. Do you have any idea how many suicides I've seen prevented from just a kind word? So how many people have seen some of the videos I've done? Did you see the one in Las Vegas when I did the video yeah. in Las Vegas? See, what you guys don't understand is that video, we went and approached these kids in front of a, a, the Bellagio Hotel in, in Las Vegas, which I'm sure none of you have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> but these kids are like playing guitar in the front of this thing. So I walk up to him and ask him, I said, hey man, can I, can I play with you guys? Like, will you go to I said, no, I want to sing. Oh, you want to sing? I said, yeah, dude. Uh -huh. They're like, what do you want to sing? I said, I don't know, do you, do you play the blues at all? They're like, oh yeah, man, we love the blues. I said, you got to promise me that once I start singing, you got you to stop. Said, oh, dude, no, man, we love this, right? So I'm like, I got Jesus! Because like a bug light, is, you hang it up in the darkness and it's a big blue light and these bugs have no idea what it is. But it's beautiful and they keep coming and I, I, I love the, the fact of the, the bug light because it's got cages inside and out. And there can be another friendly bug inside getting zapped and another one crawling in saying, what is that? <laughs> and Christians are going to be a bug light that carry the presence of God, the goodness of God, the love of God. And when someone gets close enough to you, they get hammered with the love of God. All you gotta do is believe. Amen. Why would you think that theologically it's okay to believe something that it's not experientially? Why would you think that it's just a theory? Why, why would we think that it's only for a few people when God said these signs will follow believers? Yeah. Why would we think that? Because we haven't stepped into it, because we haven't really applied the word, because we haven't even created a landing strip for Holy Spirit to land on, because we've relied upon our own strength instead of stepping out in a place of risk yeah. and asking Holy Spirit to really show up. Because yeah. we're so used to building a kingdom that looks just like us, it's called idolatry. You have an idea of how big God is, you build a kingdom that looks just like you. Hmm. I'm not being mean, I'm being real. We're so used to doing things that we're capable of and not relying upon the God that's... Yes. Of yes, amen. See, God says all things are possible with God. That's what Jesus said. And then he, he gives it over to the believer. He says, now all things are possible to them that believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Man, I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg of this thing in my life. I, I'm amazed. I, I'm, one day morgues are going to be cleared out. Woo! Yeah. So people are like, well, you know, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, yeah. morbs, yeah. where dead people are. Yeah. But, <laughs> yes, amen, <laughs> hallelujah. I'm, I'm really curious. Yeah. What would happen if you were yes. in uh, a place where everybody knew the guy that worked there, and he worked there, and he was an amputee, and yeah. everybody knew him. He's the greeter at the front door, and everybody knew him at Walmart. And what if you came into Walmart one day, prayed, and his legs went, Shh. Yes. What would happen? Yeah. What would really? What would happen? What would people think? Yeah. At first, they would think they were prosthetic. 
But I promise you that when he goes back to the doctor and they look at his brand new legs, yes. the doctors are going to be in quite an uproar. Amen. And his boss is going to be in quite an uproar. And people on the job are going to be freaked out. His family is going to be wrecked. And it might possibly make the news. And they might actually come to point the finger and say, well, I don't think so, this, that, and the other thing. And then all of a sudden that guy might get a hold of the kingdom and all of a sudden he might pray for somebody's amputated leg and it might grow out too. Amen. And then all of a sudden it's like a wildfire thing where Christians are really realizing what we're capable of. Yes. Yes. And it's yes. not so I can say, look at me and look at what I can do. It's never about that. It's about, look at God. He's amazing. Amen. I'm the messenger boy. I delivered a package. Now look at him. He's the one that paid the price. Yes. Amen. Amen. This is like possibility. Yeah. Do you know that in America, in Azusa Street, it happened? Yeah. Mm. Come on, in the early 1900s, I think it was like 1909 or something like that, when that thing happened. And Seymour prophesied that in 100 years, it's going to happen again, and it's going to be way bigger. Yeah. Guess where we are, guys? Stop relying upon what we're capable of and actually start trusting God. Amen. You all right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mess because I come up and I have no idea what I'm going to share. It's like, it's like <laughs> and honestly, if I can just have one of you that get changed in the way they think. Yeah. Look, Christianity is boring without the supernatural. Amen. amen. Yes, amen. The power of this gospel is boring. Yeah. Let me tell you, there is a tattooed up, pierced up generation, purple haired, crazy generation that don't want to just hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They want to see it. Yes. yes. Amen. Look, Christianity is boring. If it, all it is is just a word. What about what about bringing heaven here? What about you Amen. being a conduit yeah. to flow through yes. now? What yeah. about that happening? Hallelujah. What about the reality yes. of the gospel being Thank you, Lord. I'm all about getting to heaven. Yeah. But heaven is my destination, That's not right. my mission. That's right. Yeah. If heaven becomes my mission, then what I do is pray for Jesus to come back. Yeah. And if I position myself in a place yeah. to pray for Jesus to come back, I position my lens or my eye. The lamp of the body, Matthew 6, 22 says, the lamp of the body is the eye. And if your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. That's what it says. If your eye is single. That means that plan A, Jesus, just one, one view, one mission, one motive. If your eye is single, that doesn't mean double. There's no plan A and plan B. It's plan A. The life of Jesus. He's the standard. Jesus didn't do what he did as God. He did what he did as a man in right relationship with God. And what he did was he modeled what Christianity had looked like. He did the miracles as a man in right relationship with God. Depended upon God through agency of the Holy Spirit. In John 5.19 he says the Son can do nothing of himself. But what he does, he does because he sees the Father do it. But what the Father does, the Son does in like manner. In other words, guys, I've so limited myself. I've taken, Jesus humbled himself, became a bond servant. He laid his, he was fully God and fully man. He laid his divinity aside, humbled himself, became a bond servant. And up to 30 years of age, Holy Spirit wasn't, wasn't, Resting upon him, but all of a sudden, Holy Spirit in the river Jordan, bang, Holy Spirit comes down. He goes out, gets tempted, comes back out of there, and the Holy Spirit and power and his ministry was started right there. Right. See, he didn't do what he did as God, he did what he did as a man. If you get that, then we have something to shoot for. Yes. If you don't get that, you'll see a miracle and say, Well, you know, that's God. Well, that was Jesus. You know how many times I hear people when I go to pray for them? Well, yeah, but that was Jesus. Well, I understand. Let me pray for you. Bang! How did this happen? See, the same Holy Spirit that flowed through Jesus Amen. lives in me. Amen. Yes. Because God loves you profusely. Jesus didn't pay a price just to get you to heaven. That's he right. paid a price to get heaven into you. Amen. Jesus is not just some Easter story. Yeah. What would it be like for you to go to a family reunion and actually bring the real Jesus? 
What would it be like to go to your relatives that are resistant and don't believe in God and you actually bring the real, genuine Jesus into that encounter and He changes their mind? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many people have relatives that are resistant? Yeah. <laughs> what if their resistance didn't matter because you knew who you really were? Yes, amen. Yeah. Cool. Hmm. yeah. Come on, man. My whole family was rebellious. <laughs> really? And almost every one of them are in the kingdom. The angriest of them are already in. <laughs> Yay. Because if I let me let me just give you a tidbit of a faith information. That, that God gave me in the beginning of my life and I've been just going with it and I've seen it come to pass several, several times. God says, whatever I ask in prayer, it's in Mark 11 and Matthew 21, whatever I ask in prayer, believing, without doubting, I'll have what I ask for. Amen. Amen. That's what he said. So I have established faith in such a way where... I believe that my war is not, and, and it's going to be applied to many more areas, but in this area, I have it. It says that if I ask in prayer, believing, I'll have what I ask for if I don't doubt. I believe that my war is not against flesh and blood. That's Here's the reality of this thing. Any place of your mind that's not renewed by Holy Spirit is blinded by the demonic. Yeah. The carnal mind is at war against God. So if your mind's not renewed in an area, it's still at war against God. It's simple. If it's not renewed, it's at war. Period. Doesn't matter what part of your mind. If it's not renewed, it's at war. Renewed doesn't mean quoting the scripture and memorizing the scripture. Renewed means walking out that scripture because that's the truth that will truly set you free. That's See, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Doesn't mean know about the truth. Doesn't mean quote the truth. Doesn't mean memorize the truth. Faith doesn't come by memorization. Amen. Amen. Then you will know the truth and that will set you free. Knowing the truth is experiential understanding. Actually walking out the truth, experiencing the truth in your own life. And Satan can't grab that from you. It's a seed that comes to understanding. Because any seed that is sown that doesn't come to understanding. Understanding through your five senses. Understanding through your walk. Amen. Satan has the right to come and snatch that seed. And the danger is, is he doesn't just snatch it out of your life. What he does is he snatches it out of their heart and puts it in your brain and stores it there with form without power where you believe it in theory but not in reality. Wow. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you give a golf clap. Yeah, oh yeah, praise God, but not in my life. Huh. That's not okay. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Experientially understanding and walking out the truth, that is knowing the truth that God talks about and that will set you free. You all right? I'm yeah. getting a bunch of stuff, but it's all good because it's all the gospel. Hmm. So God said, whenever you ask in prayer, believing, without doubting, you'll have what you ask for. So if you have a relative that's in rebellion or somebody that doesn't believe, which is more powerful? Of the free will of a believer that understands who they are, where they're seated, where they wore from, Or the unbeliever that's mindset that is dominated by principalities, which is more powerful. We're more powerful. Now, how can we pray for somebody and they get out of it through some free will teaching that you've been taught? Hmm. What if you really believed who you were, really understood who you were, you were really seated with him in heavenly places, knew that God's will is for all men to be saved? What if you could look at someone, claim them for the gospel, settle it in your heart that they can't get out of it, and then not get out of it? Yes. Wow. Amen. Wow. Yes. Regardless Hallelujah. Regardless of their rebellion, regardless, That's right. regardless yes. of where they're at. Amen. Why would we not to bank on the word of God? Hallelujah. I have looked at people and told them, mm. you're going to be on my team. Yeah. yeah. And they've angrily said, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and I've hugged them and said, of course you will. Amen. Know. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Huh. And I've seen each one be on my team. Thank you, Lord. Why? 
It's called faith. Amen. Yeah. See, we've been taught all kinds of things. Well, they got to make the choice. Well, they got to do. Well, they got. What about what about scriptures? What do you do with this? Where Jesus said, "Who's ever sent you remitted or remitted? Yeah. Who's ever you retain or retain? Where does that happen in life?" Jesus said that to the disciples, but in Matthew 28, he said, go and teach the world and command them to all the same things that, all the same things that I have commanded you. So he transferred it over to every believer. So what if you could actually remit the sins of somebody else, remove that thing off of their life, and what if you were really an intercessor interceding from heaven towards, towards earth, wow. understanding from God's point of view, rescuing somebody in a place of strife where they're at, commanding them to come out and they can't get out of it. What if you really believe the gospel? Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Wow. See, we haven't walked in a faith place. We've walked in a theory place. And then mm. we pray and we haven't seen it come to pass. So yeah. all of a sudden, we've lived by our experience and lowered the word of God beneath our experience and allowed our experience to trump the word of God. And it's just sin. Huh. Mm. And I'll be a mean. Are you okay? Because I just... There's some people that just turned me off. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I'm not being mean, and I'm not trying to step on your toes, but I am trying to reveal your heart, sometimes to defend your mind. Wow. Because <laughs> God will reveal your heart to offend your mind. Because your mind isn't isn't in the place it needs to be. Because your heart is in the place that you break, you can't fit. Stop trying to figure it out and actually let God's Word have the place that it's supposed to. So that you can be a health stomper. Yeah. So this guy goes in the back, he comes back out and actually God puts it on my heart and he just gives me a, a, a specific amount to bless this later with him. The pastor's paying the bill, and that was awesome, you know. And the pastor, it was before he paid the bill, the waiter comes up, I said, hey man, i got to tell you something. He comes up, and I put in his hand, and I look at him, and he looks at me, and he goes, no, you don't have that. I said, shh. God loves you, and you're amazing. And he looks at me, and gets delivered. I mean, like, literally. I hugged him, told him how amazing he was again. And, he, and then he took the bill from the pastor, and the pastor, like, you know, blessed him. And he went back in the back. He comes out. We're talking. He lays a note down in front of him. Just lays it down on the table. And the girl across the table is just, like, undone. The waitress. That was a waitress for a while. She goes, you have no idea. She goes, I've never met anybody like you. My whole life. She's a Christian my whole life. breaks my heart because a lot of people don't want anything to do with the church because we don't know what it means to love. I'm not being mean. I love miracles. It's a miracle when you become love. I live my life in an unoffendable place. You can't offend me. I wouldn't give you the right to offend me. Yeah. I don't live my life to... I don't walk on eggshells. I walk confident in knowing that. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because he's been told there. And I couldn't read it because I knew I was going to cry. So I cried a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew the note was going to mess me up. So I just put it in my pocket. And he goes, I need you to read that. And okay. I said, Oh, yeah, I do. I said, All right. So I went and leave. And uh, he's back in the back just kind of looking at me and all of that. You know? So I walk back. And I said, Hey, man. I said, You all right? He goes, Yeah. He said, I'm glad you came back here, man. Because, like, you prayed for my knees and they got, like, hot, and I didn't say anything, and my knees got, like, they're completely better, like, I've been squatting and telling everybody in the kitchen that this is real, I don't even believe in God, but this is real, <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks at me, he goes, you, you, you change her, <laughs> it's just a waiter, it's just a Sunday after church, just a waiter, see, we over-spiritualize this thing, you think you've got to be led to somebody, that you're going to be led like God's going to give you a big booming voice. Here's my, here's my understanding of being led. If you can look at somebody and tell yourself in your heart that Jesus did pay a price for them, then don't feel led. Wow. Yeah. Huh. We over-spiritualize this thing. We think we've got to hear some grand word of knowledge, some grand prophecy for somebody before we can tell them how amazing they are. 
It's selfishness. It needs to be broken off and we need to actually love people and tell people who they really are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just encourage somebody. Just build somebody up. Just encourage somebody. Just tell somebody that they're awesome. Yeah. Just, in, just, just encourage, edify, provide grace to somebody. It's really simple. It's not hard. It's not technical. Just love somebody. Are you guys all right? Is this yeah. making sense? It's not too heavy, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I look behind this waiter, and all these waiters just are standing there. And he's like, listen. He goes, I know you got to go, but all these guys want to pray for it. So I look behind him, and he steps away, and she goes, I'm first. <laughs> <laughs> All because I'm just a son. All because I just know I'm a son. It's not because I'm some specially amazingly gifted young man. I don't teach gifting. Because if I teach gifting, you rely on a gift. Yeah, that's right. But if I teach identity and believe in priesthood, you'll yeah. rely on Amen. Son. Yes. And then signs will follow you. Amen. It won't be your focal point. It'll just be a byproduct. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Miracles are a byproduct of being a son. They're not my focal point. People see the videos and they say, ooh, he's out of bounds. <laughs> you don't know my heart. I'm pouring out my heart. Like if you were there yesterday or the day before, I'm pouring out my heart. I'm completely way different than what you see on the video. Except on the video, you see love. You can't. There's none of you that can deny it. You can say what you want to say. But God said, I'm allowing you to do the videos because it's what love looks like in action. So if God said that, I'm going to place it. I don't do the videos so that I get the meaning out there. I, I do the videos because it gives a visual representation to what it yeah. looks like. To yeah. What it looks like in the simplicity of the gospel. Yeah. Man. So I walked outside and I read the note. And he said, you, you have no idea what you've done today. You have no idea what you've changed in my life. My whole view has changed about what a Christian really is. You've changed my life. I am completely indebted to you and can't believe that this happened to me today, of all days. I started to talk about how bad this day was. When I was in Las Vegas and I started singing with those guys, see, that waiter was suicidal. He wanted to end his life. The waiter, that, that, that day, suicidal, didn't want to be here anymore. Guess what, guys? You see him every day. Everywhere you go, in the in the streets, in the malls, in the schools. How many people go to high school that are in here? Anybody? No high school students at all. Well, they're all camp. Okay. How many have you ever had a kid in your school commit suicide? Come on, man. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Suicide rate is going skyrocketing. What would it be like if you were the one? that had an encouraging word before that person was going to cap himself. What if you brought a word that actually brought them to the reality of why they're here and snapped the bondage off of them with just an encouraging word? Because you're a steward of grace. Do you know that you're a steward of grace? The Bible says that no corrupt word come out of your life, come out of your mouth, but only that which is used for encouragement and edification that would provide grace to the, to the people that hear you. That's what it says. It's Ephesians 4.29. It's very powerful. It says that life and death are in the power of your tongue. You're a steward of grace. So God's given you favor, and every time you speak an encouraging word, like let's say I see this guy and I say, man, I just think there's an amazing opportunity. I see that like you, you, you ran wild, but there's a leader inside of you, and God's honing you in, and for the, back, for the last 12 months, God's been speaking to your heart and shifting some things around in such a way, there's music in your life, there's a music thing in your life, there's actually a DJ in your life, like a DJing thing, but actually more of a recording industry, like life, like somebody that's going to actually be in the recording market, in the recording industry. I know it is. So, so like, you're not just going to end up in Miami, that's not going to be a place you're actually going to, one of the weirdest 
think that you're going to end up in Nashville, which is weird because you think Nashville, man, come on, I ain't no country, but watch, this is going to happen. You're going to end up going there. You're going to actually start to record for a Christian music label, and it's going to actually bring hip-hop to a place like Lecrae, like Cross Movement, like that kind of stuff, but it's going to be different because it's going to bring kingdom, the reality of kingdom, and the music's going to be crushing, and you're going to start to stomp the enemy through lyrics, and you're going to pull stuff out that's not kingdom. You're going to rearrange stuff, and people are going to come to you and actually ask your help for lyrics because you're also a writer and a poet. What if, what if you could just hear God and just pull it and just and all of a sudden just see somebody like that. that? Let's say they were really down and out and they wanted to like be done with life. And all of a sudden like whack, God just like rearranges everything. And what if they didn't want to die anymore? And what if you just brought hope, the reality of hope to somebody? Amen. Come on, man, this is big. Yes. Amen. Come on, that's not a hard thing. You just hear the heart of God and share the heart of God with somebody. Not to show off. I love that because I didn't even think about it. I never think about impressing anybody. I really do. I just love people. I'm sitting in the middle of a conversation with, with the amazing man of God, her son. And I'm, I'm sharing with him and a waiter will come up and I'd say, hold on a second. And bang! And bring it. And the one waiter comes up and he's like, He's like, hey, our food. And I said, man, I see this technical genius inside of you. There's this computer genius inside. You're going to be a programmer, actually a computer engineer. And this is who you are. This is your creative for. And he's just like, <laughs> really? He doesn't even know what to say. He's just standing there. He's locked. He can't move. Why? Because God's gripping his heart. Because the words that I speak are spirit and life. And you're created to do that. You're created to Amen. speak life yes. to people. Amen. 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 It's exciting. It's not just a gift. It's a lifestyle. Yes. yes. I don't move in a gift thing. I move in a lifestyle. This never shuts down. Everywhere I go, it's just the way I am. I don't like turning on and turning off. You can be in ministry and turn ministry off. Or you can just go and minister to somebody and then you walk away and it's done. Or you can live a life that's exciting and supernatural and call the destiny out of people's life and stop destruction. All you've got to do is just submit. Okay, God, yes. Yes, God, yes, God. Yes. All right. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Come on, it's really simple. Yes, it is. We make it technical when you think yeah. like you hear prophecy and you hear prophetic stuff and you're like, oh my gosh, I just got gifted. No, I'm a Christian. I'm just a believer. I know who I am. I'm a son. You're a son, you're a daughter. So what if you yeah. just knew who you were? And what if all of a sudden you weren't having to look for a word, but you actually became the word? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Huh. Come Amen. on. You all right? Yeah. I hate when you, when you, I don't like the fact when you start to prophesy and you start to share the truth about somebody, everybody else is like, I want a word. I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that. It's the nature of it. You start to, because this is what you're, the reason why people hunger for it so much is that you're created to be naturally supernatural. You're created to be supernatural. You're created to walk in the very fact of being supernatural. So the word says that life and death is in the power of your tongue. So you have the choice to either speak life or speak death. Let me tell you the power of words. If I choose to speak life, I have favor with God. God says let no discouraging word, but let encouraging words. Words of edification that build people up and provide grace to them that hear them. That word that I speak, I actually have favor with God. So that word that I spoke, I actually mark you with favor. And say, God, I have favor with you. I thank you that now you're going to increase favor on him. Yes. Amen. Amen. So now, God allows you to write the check in Jesus' name. And he knows who to write the check to by the words of encouragement that come out of your mouth. So you mark people for blessing and favor. Yes. Yes. Do you know the word that Jesus, in Acts 10.38, Jesus went about doing good. Healing all that were oppressed by the devil. You know that doing good means bestowing blessing? Amen. And since God's blessed you with every spiritual blessing, God's blessed you with every spiritual blessing. 
You're blessed with everyone. When you encourage somebody, you bestow blessing upon somebody. Amen. Come on. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> it is. You guys okay? Yes. Do you know that when you speak gossip, criticism, and complaining, you're partnering with hell itself? Yes. So when yes. you complain about somebody, mm-hmm. when you criticize yes. somebody, when you gossip about somebody, yeah. you actually mark that person for loss. Mm-hmm. You step outside of the shadow of the Most High, yes. and you mark a person for loss just by your complaint, your criticism, mm-hmm. and your gossip. Don't yes. think it's not powerful, because it is. Mm-hmm. So you can choose to partner with life, yeah. speak life and encourage Amen. somebody and bring grace to somebody, yes. or you can yes. speak death and bring destruction upon someone. Yes. Life. Thank you, Lord. So don't think that it's not powerful, because it is. Mm-hmm. Those two guys that were out in Las Vegas that I went and I shared some work to, both of them, had broken up with a girlfriend in Sweden, or got broken up with them. Both of them had a gun, and they were two weeks, and they were in their last week of their last hoorah before they committed suicide. That's why they were in Las Vegas. And if you watch the video, the kid's like, man, I can't believe this. I, here I am in a place full of sin, full of bad stuff everywhere. And, and, and God, here. I mean, maybe in the church I thought, but here, God. Yeah. The reality of why we're a Christian is to change the lives of people yes. every day. Yes. You are the source of life for somebody. The source of life. It's amazing. God is going to shift and change your life, young lady. I don't know who you are, I don't know where you, where you are right now, but I see this thing trying to grip you, trying to make you sad on a constant basis, trying to make you angry and upset, and you think that the world's against you, but I promise you this. I've been hearing the heart of God about you the whole service. God loves you profusely. You're amazing. This thing's going to be broken off of your life because there's no reason for you to be depressed because you're awesome. Yeah. God loves you so much. I see you working with children, working with little kids, bringing the reality of why kids are even on the planet. I see you going to different nations and working with orphans and working with kids that have nothing. You're going to go on mission trips and come back. Today you're going to become excited again about the gospel, about why you're alive. There's a brilliant technical genius about you too. There's also a piano in you. I don't know if you've ever played before. There's a worshiper inside of you where you've got keys and you've got songs inside of you that need to be released. And lately you've brought, you've been writing and the writing is sad and how bad things are and how bum this is and how bad this is and your heart's been broken and boys and it's been a breakup thing. It's been a horrible thing and you're in the midst of something right now. But God says today is the day of great restoration. Big time grace on you, man, because for a while the job market hasn't been to where it needs to be, man. But I see you. I mean, you're a big guy. I, I see construction, but I also see the reality of a foreman, of a leader inside of you. I believe there's an entrepreneurial thing that's on your life, man, and you want to have your own business. And for a while now, it's been like you've been getting smacked, wondering which way is up. But it's going to all change, man. You have kind of a radical past, a hardcore past about just... Hardcore this and that, and sometimes you just can't seem to climb out of it, man. You can't seem to get past it because it's constantly whispering your name and telling you who you're not. But today is a different day, bro. Amen. Last night I saw you over there in the corner. You were praying. You're a prayer warrior. But also, like, you're you're an intercessor and you intercede too. But there is a movement that's going to come out of you. Hallelujah. And you're going to actually go into cities. You're going to actually go in to, like, hardcore places, man, because you're a bold guy. You just, like... Doesn't matter, man. You're going in. You just you just go in. There's a warrior in the spirit in you that's going to actually raise up the younger generation to be who they're called to be. There's a radical call upon your life, man. And you you've kind of ran from it a little bit growing up, a little bit here, a little bit there. You're kind of like a little Christian here, a little Christian there. But God says it's time for full fledged, and your life's going to completely transform yeah. the reality. Your family's going to be completely wrecked, going to be completely transformed from the reality of who you are. Because God is your Father.
four-year period of time where there's been a real horrible thing that's been four years in your life, 40, pretty much 48 months of just destruction of all kinds of stuff where things have been taken, taken one, taken again, taken again. I see actually stuff that's been stolen from you and been taken away. And you've been like in this place to try to get stuff back. And God says, don't worry about getting your stuff back because more is coming. Amen. It's going to have nothing to do with what's been taken from you. Hallelujah. I see lawsuits and all kinds of weird stuff, just Thank attacks from this way or that way or this way or that way. Your mom, a great mom. Yeah. So, like a lot of times we think our kids, they've seen this and they've seen that. And man, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not representing the right way. I just want to tell you that you're a great mom. You're a great job. Okay, so don't be discouraged. Yeah. This is going to be a great year of grace for you. Amen. 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 Amen.